year has been nothing but sensational. Inside the USS, Gerald R. Ford, the massive floating city that never sleeps. Do you remember the Empire Strikes Back from Star Wars? Maybe you still recall Cloud City, that massive mining colony floating in the atmosphere of Bespin. Well, what used to be science fiction is now reality. How, you may ask? Not in the sky, but on the sea. The USS Gerald R. Ford is nothing short of a city that floats on water. It's real. The USS Gerald R. Ford, one of the most technologically advanced aircraft carriers ever built, stands as a testament to human engineering and logistical brilliance. In this video, you'll journey inside the USS Gerald R. Ford and discover how this behemoth holds a population larger than multiple towns while projecting unmatched power across the oceans. Want to enlist with us as we explore more military marvels from the deep? Hit that subscribe button so you don't miss the next deployment. The Floating Giant. They call it the largest city at sea, but that doesn't quite capture what it really is. The USS Gerald R. Ford isn't just a ship, it's a moving city. A skyscraper turned on its side and set adrift, housing nearly 5,000 people. Measuring over 1,092 feet, about the length of three football fields, and weighing over 100,000 tons, it's heavier than 250 Boeing 747s combined. And if you're curious about the cost, it's around $13 billion, which makes it the priciest warship ever built. Constructed over nearly four years at Newport News Shipbuilding, every element was designed with precision. The Ford is built for more than just floating. It's designed to sustain life, exert power, and move quickly. Thanks to its two nuclear reactors, it can run for more than 20 years without needing to refuel, cruising across oceans at speeds exceeding 35 knots, which is about 40 miles per hour. Just to give you an idea, if a city runs out of power, you'd call the electric company. But if the Ford loses power, it simply creates its own electricity plant, boasting a capacity greater than some small country's power grids. Yet this ship is more than just metal and numbers. It's like a floating microcosm of society. Within its walls exist laws, a hierarchy, a community, and daily life rhythms that unfold like a small self-sustaining world. The powerhouse below. If the flight deck is the brain, then the engine room is the heart, and this one pulses with nuclear energy. Deep within the ship, far below where sunlight can reach, two A1B nuclear reactors hum away. Together, they generate over 600 megawatts of power, enough to supply 100,000 homes. The air down there is warm and mechanical, buzzing with energy. Sailors refer to it as the belly, where the ship seems to come alive. This power doesn't just move propellers, it fuels the Ford's advanced systems. Take EMALS, Electromagnetic Aircraft Launch System, for instance. It replaces the old steam catapults used on previous carriers. Rather than clouds of hissing steam, EMALS uses controlled magnetic pulses to launch jets skyward. It's smoother, faster, and far safer for planes and pilots. When a jet takes off, there's no dramatic steam explosion, just a swift motion, a metallic shutter, and the roar of engines cutting through the sky. The deck crew barely flinches. They're used to it. The Ford's massive energy output also means it's ready for future challenges. The Navy intentionally designed it to be future-proof, capable of incorporating laser defense systems, high-energy sensors, and railguns that could someday launch projectiles at seven times the speed of sound. In short, it's not just about the Navy's present, it's a blueprint for the next 50 years, life on the floating city. Now picture what it's like living inside this metal fortress. The Ford is home to over 5,000 sailors, each with roles that range from tightening a screw to launching fighter jets. Keeping that many people alive, fed, and mentally sound in the vast ocean is no easy task. Food is the first challenge. The ship's galley operates around the clock, serving nearly 18,000 meals a day. Breakfast, lunch, dinner, and something known as mid-rats, which stands for midnight rations. Mid-rats are meant for the night crew working through the dark hours, who might grab whatever's left from dinner. After staring at radar screens for 10 hours, even reheated spaghetti tastes divine. The cooks start early and work tirelessly, 
going through tons of rice, meat, and veggies daily. Despite being at sea, they strive to keep things fresh. Supply ships deliver fruit, dairy, and meat through mid-ocean replenishment runs, meaning the crew can enjoy fruit salad or chicken curry even when they're far from shore. With more than 100 cooks in the galleys, the menu rotates frequently. Burgers, tacos, pasta, curry, eggs, pancakes, and sometimes even pizza night. They cater to allergies and special diets, all with the simple goal of keeping morale high. On a ship where work is endless and sleep is short, a good meal is like therapy. But food is just one piece of the puzzle. Sailors also need ways to blow off steam, relax, and feel a sense of normalcy. The Ford has a gym, a small movie theater, a barber shop, and even a Starbucks. There's a ship's store selling everything from toothpaste to PlayStations. For younger sailors, these little things mean everything. A haircut before inspection, a coffee before duty, a quick gym session between shifts. They help in maintaining a sense of humanity. Still, space is tight. Most sailors sleep in what they call racks, stacked bunks that barely allow you to roll over. Each sailor gets a small locker for their belongings, a reading light, and a curtain for some privacy. But even that is a luxury. Every area echoes with machine hums, radio chatter, and the footsteps of people working in shifts. Even sleeping requires discipline. The ship operates on a 24-hour cycle split into watches, meaning there's always someone awake. When one shift ends, another begins, making the Ford's rhythm constant. Resupply, the art of staying alive. One of the most remarkable sights at sea is an UNREP, or Underway Replenishment. Just imagine two massive ships cruising side by side at 25 miles per hour, only a few dozen feet apart, while lines of cables transfer food, ammunition, and fuel across the gap. It's like trying to parallel park on a highway while passing groceries through the window. During these operations, helicopters hover above to drop pallets onto the deck, while sailors rush to unload and secure everything. Thousands of pounds of supplies move in mere hours. It's dangerous, precise, and absolutely crucial. That's what keeps the Ford self-sufficient for months. While it can carry weeks' worth of food and supplies, it won't last forever without resupply. The ability to refuel and restock at sea is what transforms it into a genuine floating city. Organized chaos of the flight deck. If you want to see controlled chaos in action, check out the Ford's flight deck during operations. Spanning 4.5 acres, it has room for 75 aircraft, mostly F-A-18 Super Hornets, E-2 Hawkeyes, and soon F-35 Sea Lightning IIs. When flight ops kick off, the noise is incredible. Jet engines roar, catapults whine, and the deck vibrates beneath you. Every person on that deck wears color-coded shirts, creating a kind of living choreography that maintains order amidst the chaos. Yellow shirts are the director's guiding aircraft into position. Green shirts handle maintenance and catapults. Purple shirts refuel planes. Red shirts manage bombs and ammo. Brown shirts oversee particular aircraft and white shirts supervise safety and landings. Communication relies mostly on hand signals, an entire silent language of pointing and gesturing. It's too loud to speak, and one slip could be dangerous. During launches, the ML system catapults jets off the deck at 165 knots. For landings, aircraft catch a tail hook on an arresting wire to stop within 300 feet. They can launch or recover a jet every 25 seconds, faster than any previous carrier. It's part factory floor, part battlefield, part ballet. Each motion is practiced until it becomes instinct. Everyone has a part to play and trusts one another to do theirs. Built to survive anything. Power is one thing, but surviving is another. The Ford's designers built it to endure nearly anything. Its hull is divided into hundreds of watertight compartments, meaning if one part floods, the rest can stay afloat. Fire doors, blast-resistant walls, and backup systems exist for nearly every function. The command tower, or the ship's island, is smaller and further back than on older carriers. This gives more space on the deck and reduces radar visibility. For something this size, the Ford is surprisingly stealthy. Inside, sensors are everywhere, monitoring temperature, pressure, and vibrations. If a pipe leaks or a system overheats, alarms go off immediately. Sailors constantly train for emergencies, whether it's fires, chemical spills, or simulated missile strikes. Every week, they hold drills. Sometimes it's a fake fire, other times a flooding compartment, a city built for the future. The USS Gerald R. Ford, 
symbolizes more than military power. It illustrates what humans can achieve when precision, ambition, and engineering come together. It's built to deter wars, project peace through strength, and carry thousands of lives safely across the ocean. But for those on board, it's more than just a symbol. It's their workplace, their home, their challenge, and sometimes their prison. For months on end, they find themselves between sky and sea, with nothing but endless horizons surrounding them. Yet, they keep the engines roaring, the planes soaring, and the lights shining bright through the night. It's a city that never sleeps, a civilization afloat where human endurance meets cutting-edge technology. And in those quiet moments between flight operations and alarms when the deck cools and the sea stretches endlessly below, it serves as a reminder. Despite being the largest warship in the world, at its core, it remains a vessel carrying people, all of whom are yearning for land, for home, and for the day they'll touch shore again. Here's something to think about. The USS Gerald R. Ford isn't just the pinnacle of naval engineering, it's also a symbol of trust. This supercarrier stretches over 337 meters long and weighs around 100,000 tons, packed with systems that are so advanced, they really push for perfection. Deep inside, two A1B reactors are running, generating about 600 megawatts of power to make the ship move keep life support systems going, and power EMALS, the electromagnetic launch system that catapults aircraft without using steam. But even with all this cutting-edge technology, nothing operates on its own. It's the crew that tightens the bolts, keeps an eye out for any sparks, and tackles issues when the pressure's on. Here's something surprising. Despite all that power and automation, the ship has a smaller crew compared to older carriers, but that means there's less room for mistakes. This floating fortress might never truly rest, but when the deck quiets down at midnight, it still buzzes with the energy of its crew. That's what Power at Sea is all about. An apex of trust, USS Gerald R. Ford is the apex of trust because of its apex engineering. Engineering that stretches over 337 meters long and weighs around 100,000 tons, a pinnacle of shipbuilding innovation packed with advanced systems that push for perfection. The Trust is not just built on this phenomenal engineering, but also the crew that helps to tighten the bolts, people who keep an eye out for any sparks, and ones who readily tackle issues as they come aboard. The carrier is constantly buzzing alive with the energy of the crew bustling about and never resting at the deck even at midnight. USS Gerald serves as a perfect example of how machine mastery and human coordination join together to make the impossible possible.